It was called the perfect war, a mission carried out with surgical precision. But ironically, many of the 366 Americans killed in Desert Storm were victims of friendly fire, a term invented by the Pentagon to explain that in the frenzy of war, we sometimes kill our own. Since we began as a nation, we have gone to war 12 times. We have lost nearly 2 million lives, and we have left many of our soldiers behind on the field of battle, bloodied and scarred, drunk with dark images, neglected and angry, in need of help. The way I live now is like I lived back in the jungle. 15 years later, look at me. This is where I live at. Send me a postcard. This is Shad Meshad's world, born out of the ashes of the Vietnam experience, the result of decades of commitment, caring, and action. The bottom line is that we're right amongst thousands and thousands of Vietnam vets that are homeless right here where we're standing now, and nothing's really being done per se for their situation. They pump the stuff into you like um, country, God, flag, and all this. But when you come down and you come back off the high, then you hit here, skid roll. I served in Vietnam. For what? For me sleeping in the street now? In a sleeping bag, just like I did when I was in Vietnam? There are effects of war. And, you know, once you understand that, then you deal with all the idiosyncrasies, all the uh, inequities, all the prejudices, all the denials. And those are the things that really our foundation is battling with. But we battle with trying to create solutions. Solutions have not been easy to come by for many of our veterans. Since they have come home, some have gone from battlefield the next thing I knew, I was flipping through the air. to battlefield. And I could hear everyone screaming and I heard myself screaming. From fighting the enemy to fighting the government. I thought they'd fix me up. I didn't think they'd be amputated. Jay Humphreys heard the cheers when he came home from Desert Storm, but he was missing his left eye, part of his intestines, and both of his legs. They can build these smart bombs that can fire straight through the door of, of a building. They should be able to make some sort of a device that can allow people to walk again. After suffering excruciating pain from an antiquated prosthetic device supplied by the Army, he requested a more up-to-date version. The Army said no. I am not going to spend the taxpayers' money and for people to complain that we are wasting our money. There are so many patients who need it. Why should I spend 5000 for something that's not needed? It's a matter of dollars and cents. And it's a matter of they'll spend a billion dollars on a bomb, but not an extra $1,000 for a limb once they blow a soldier's leg off. For other veterans, hundreds of thousands of them there are no physical ailments, no crutches or bandages, but they are wounded, to be sure. They harbor feelings of guilt, fear, rage, and sadness. They experience flashbacks and emotional trauma. And I remember looking at the pile of men that had been alive an hour before and were dead now, and I, I was one of the guys that picked them up and put them on the medevac choppers as they went out, and parts of the bodies were coming off my hands, and it was really very... But I know I went numb. I was just totally, totally numb. And I felt aged when I came back. I knew I was only 20 that day, but I might as well have been 80. Shad Mishad has spent almost half of his life fighting in this arena. He has acted as therapist, friend, and confidant to thousands of troubled soldiers. And he has helped dispense sanity from the jungles of Vietnam to the battlegrounds of Watts. When 60 Minutes investigated the Veterans Administration a few years back for not adequately treating the wounds of war, they put the issue of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorders, in prime time, front and center, to 25 million Americans. His name is Shad Mishad, and he took us to a place where 20 years ago he found a group of veterans sick with PTSD. They mistrusted society, their government, and especially the Veterans Administration. They hid out here and rebuilt Vietnam. Mishad, both a veteran and a therapist, tried to help. At the time, the only thing he could do was to get them to talk it out. Talking might keep them from self-destruction. 20 years later, this is the result of Mishad's work. Small storefront meeting places throughout the country called vet centers. 
Congress insisted that the reluctant Veterans Administration get out of Washington and do something local and innovative, give them places to talk it out outside of VA hospitals. Well, one thing you have to understand is the VA as an entity has never liked the Vet Center program. It's an insult, basically an embarrassment. The VA's established routines and procedures couldn't include the new therapies required to treat PTSD. Mishad explains. I mean, it was jammed down the VA's throat. I mean, literally, it was stated that it would have been better to put the vet center program under forestry or agriculture, as funny as that may sound, for the logistical support that we needed to get started. And we were a little $20 million plus program that took care of all the Vietnam vets. And here they've got a $24 billion program that couldn't address Vietnam vets. As executive director of the VVAF, Mishad has taken the lessons from the bureaucratic nightmare of the Veterans Administration and designed a more efficient system to deliver services to the veterans who need them. Without the private monies coming in, the whole thing falls on the lap of the government. And the government doesn't do a really good job in efficiently and quickly providing services. I mean, we could have put in for a grant to the National Institute of Mental Health and heard uh, 12 to 18 months later about doing a workshop on returning warriors. And what did you do after it took how long? Well, it took about 72 hours, actually, from the time I talked to Shad to the time we were standing in front of an audience of people that needed to hear the kind of information that we had to give them. One by one, from Denver to Jacksonville to Cleveland, through a network of the world's experts in the field of PTSD, soldiers are being brought home from the battlefield at last. The Vietnam Veteran Aid Foundation uh, is really a remarkable foundation in the sense that here is a private foundation that's championing the cause of the underdog. They're really providing an advocacy for veterans who are either disenfranchised in our country or who are homeless or who need assistance of many types, they need a foundation like BVF because they don't have anywhere else to turn. People like Harry Haygood and others had nowhere else to turn until the Southern California Veterans Services Council, a hands-on organization funded by the VVAF, began a job training and placement program for homeless vets. It gave me uh, dignity, my self-pride back, uh, self-motivation and a, a strong outlook on life. I always wanted to, you know, go back to school and get some type of training, technical training or skill. And being homeless is real difficult to attend school if you're on the streets. And this program has housed me until I complete my training. Well, you can't get to solutions dealing with issues like readjustment, dealing with traumatic experiences overnight. There's no quick fix. And I wish that there had been someone, anyone, that could have done something to help me a long time ago. I wouldn't have hurt myself, and I wouldn't have hurt the ones that are around me as much as I have. People's lives are at stake. The, the problems that come out of a war can, can lead to depression, can lead to, to suicidal ideation. We know this. So what Shad is doing, and the VVF is doing, is raising money to provide opportunities and ultimately saving lives. There's no question about that. I mean, you've got to show you can make a difference, and you've got to be up front. It's not like you do this, and this person's cured, or this situation's fixed, but it's the beginning. It's a process, and we really provide that opportunity. What all these things say about SHAD and about the Vietnam Veterans Aid Foundation is that they have a very unique role to play. They fill in the niches. They fill in places where either no one wants to go or that no one legally can go. And they put a heart and soul into it, not just regulations, not just laws. And as a result, uh, they can provide the kind of services that you can't find anywhere. Theologians, philosophers, and great thinkers throughout history have all warned us of the disastrous effects of war on the human spirit. But it is our duty as a nation to assign meaning to their sacrifice, to determine whether their efforts have gone for peace and hope and justice or for nothing more than heartbreak and homelessness and horror. This is what Shad Mishad and his Vietnam Veterans Aid Foundation are all about. To make warriors and their families strong at the broken places, to return them whole to their communities, and to let the wisdom and truth about war be heard 
by the next generation of Americans. Satellite and combat operations are being 